I recall this from the first video that we had, uh, the first couple of videos that we had put up there about Noah and Noah's Ark and Noah's Flood, because someone was saying that it couldn't happen. It was just like make-believe and everything like that. It couldn't really happen. And then there were others who brought forward information that proved that actually the flood, first of all, did happen, or from the evidence, it it was witnessed by different civilizations, different ancient cultures, and different mythologies, and pseudo-religious um, um, documents prove that there was a Noah's flood, at least, or there was some great deluge that af affected uh, the earth, you understand, that was over the earth at some time. They might be a little disagreed about you know, which time it was or, or who was the, quote, Noah. You understand, it depends on the Babylonian records or these records or those records, so forth and so on. Or the, the idea of the ark. But there's a, there's a collective of people out there, or we can say beings and people, men and people, under the control of these, of these hyperdimensional beings. But from, from our perspective, from the perspective of many folks, there's a lot of people who just hate the whole idea of Noah's flood and Noah's ark. So we have to ask the question, why are there certain people who seem to have a, oh, I don't like to use these so-called big words, but they have a, a, a visceral reaction to, to any insinuation that Noah's, flood or that the flood and Noah's ark could have happened even though more and more proof from even scientists, so-called scientists who have studied all the data, even some of them who basically believe that it was just a so-called fairy tale or old wives tale or old superstition or old story that was told, and some of them even were challenged to, you know, investigate it and prove it, just don't assume on the surface. So some of them have actually gone into years of, of diligent research and at the end of it had to, had to confess that, you know what, this really did happen and with what's going on right now with the whole instability of the earth and the floods and so forth and so on. I mean, look at the tsunami a couple of years ago. The tsunami a couple of years ago, if you were to tell people that such a thing could happen or would happen, they wouldn't believe it. If you talk about Hurricane Katrina a couple of years before it happened, People would never believe this. They'll say, okay, a storm, but nothing like that. Most people say it's man-made. But when you look at the size of that storm, you know, just the, the mere size of it, when you look at the size of the, of, the, of the tsunami, when you look at how many places are being flooded out, like Hong Kong and Bangkok right now, and, and the water levels that are rising, if you look at what just happened just recently with the whole uh, snowstorm, or a sudden early snowstorm in the, in the northeastern region that has put literally millions of people in the dark in a time where they celebrate darkness. This is, this is a time where they celebrate darkness. This is Halloween time. But because it's put them in the dark and they can't go about trick-or-treating and, and to, their, to their witches' sabbaths and other kind of rituals and uh, other um, activities that they all want, to participate in. A lot of people are very frustrated. And this is where we say that there is a blessing, a barakat. The Almighty is showing us a blessing and a barakat. Because this is such a, you have to understand that the witches and, and those who are into the so-called occult, especially at the real serious, deeper levels, things have to happen in a certain way at a certain time, so forth and so on. If it doesn't happen in a certain way at a certain time, they believe, and some say rightly, that their magic, their evil sorcery and witchcraft magic cannot work if it does not happen at a certain time, at a, at a certain day, a certain hour, so forth and so on. This is one thing about those who are into the occult or witchcraft, so forth and so on, the serious folks, not some of the play, play people. You, you know, those who are on the outer, you know, the hippie folks, the, the you know, the, the Woodstock kind of hippie folks, the crazy folks, you know, the people who just want to, you know, be strange, get attention. Not those. We're talking about the serious folks who, we're talking about your, your politicians, we're talking about your heads of industry, we're talking about those who have a, a maniacal 
um, desire to rule and control people, the same people who are talking about, like, overpopulation. They're like saying the population is getting too much when they find out that actually we're at, what, 7, 8 billion, that you can actually fit these billions of people into a place the size of Texas. Can you imagine that these billions of people into the size, but they say, but the problem is, is the resources. Because every time they make an argument, there are other people who we can say, for the basic template of it, are on the side of the righteous or on the side of the truth, who prove that that's a lie. Why are you telling that we have too many people on the face of the earth? There's more than just enough land for even more billions of people. But they're saying, no, it's too much, because there's a little diabolical conspiracy behind that, and we'll get to that hopefully in another. We'll focus on that particular issue. But what we're talking about here is Noah's Flood the whole idea of Noah's flood and Noah's ark. There are certain folks who would hate that, the, the, the whole idea of it. And a couple of years ago, we put forward a video where we just wanted to address, you know, the fact that, yes, um, Noah's um, ark as a reality, when you get the measurements correct and the proper interpretation and translation of the size of the ark, that Noah's ark is feasible. It's scientific. It's, it's logical. And, and the reactions that we got from certain people, and then we checked videos and links and everything like that and found that there was a whole set of folks who seemed to be focused on debunking the idea that there was a global flood. They seemed to be um, f fixated on debunking the idea that there was a Noah or that there was uh, a remnant. We say right here the Og, the Og, the eight that was saved with Noah. They, they, they wanted to bunk these ideas. And we, we start to get a little curious of, okay, what's behind this? You know, what's behind this sort of reaction? And then it became clear and obvious as we start to get into the detail. You see, Noah's flood destroyed their, for lack of a better word, witchcraft, their ancient witchcraft. Um, matrix and civilization it destabilized it it, it, it. it set them back. One can say thousands of years. Like it's like the Tower of Babel incident. The Tower of Babel incident also set them back a long time. You understand? And because of this, it's almost as though um, like we don't like slavery. You know why? We as the Beit Israel, the once lost but now found black sheep in the house of Israel, why don't we like slavery? Because we recognize what it was, what it did to us, but then we embrace it in the biblical scriptural sense because then we're able to put it in its proper context, and then and only then are we able to move forward. Are we able to heal and be healed and move forward when we put it within its proper context for us, when we know the half of the story that hasn't been told. But just the general idea of like a noose, like when, when a black person who's somewhat conscious sees a noose, they don't like that idea. When they see, you know, because it brings back, it brings back trauma. So when they hear about Noah and Noah's Ark, it also brings back a certain trauma, maybe not in these individuals themselves, but in the hyperdimensional entities, or you could say the demons that they are possessed or that they are directed or controlled or influenced by. This is why they hate this idea of Noah, of the flood, of the ark, the Tower of Babel, or anything to do with that. And whenever they get a chance on the opportunity, they're always trying to, to mock it or they're trying to debunk it or they're trying to make it seem, make you believe that it didn't happen, even though we're in times right now which are just like the times of Noah. We're getting these same sort of, I mean, what do you think a storm is, a snowstorm is? It might be colder because the weather, the season is colder, so it comes down not as rain, but it comes down as snow, but that's water. Why do you think the Bangkok, look what's happening in Bangkok. They, they barely even show this on regular news. You have to go to Deutsche Welle. You have to go to um, BBC or some of the other, or PBS, the, the nightly news report or something like that, to really get to see more of what's happening on the other side of the world. I mean, there are floods 
that are going on in various parts of the world that is, that is causing almost total devastation of, of, of places. And so far, a lot of people are not being killed by this. There's still a lot of mercy in, 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 in the matrix, so to speak. You know, that a lot of people are not being killed by it, but it's mainly um, um, property. There's like property damage. You understand? But some folks are more affected by loss of property than they are by loss of lives. And they, they, it's PC, so they're not going to tell you, but they are really torn up when we look at these storms that's been happening, tearing up everything. And some people are on the, the verge. They're, such, they're so materialist. They, 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 they are so um, materialistically minded or maybe actually mindless, so materially mindless that they are almost at the, at the point of a psychological break because of these devastations. So the whole connection with Noah and with the flood, and we have to look at, well, what were the causatives? We have to look at what are the causes behind Noah's flood? What are the reasons? See, what they never touch on, they always say that that much water couldn't have covered the whole earth. They say that that many animals, all the animals in the world could not fit in the ark. You know, just, I mean, they're playing on your ignorance. They're hoping that you don't read and study these things for yourself, and then you can put it in the proper context. But they're basically saying that this many people could not, we all could not have come from these eight people in the ark, so forth and so on. And so they're finding different little, I call it ignorance points, points that you are ignorant of. But, but they can make you believe that this is the reason why it couldn't happen. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, look at all the animals in the zoo. Can you fit them in a boat, in a yacht, or something like that, you know, thinking that you're not really going to pay attention? And unfortunately, a lot of people don't. Because if you ask folks, ask people, uh, maybe they should do a poll on this. How many people believe that there was a, a flood? that destroyed ancient civilization besides a few. You don't have to say Noah and his family, but besides a few. Then ask the next question, well, um, how many um, of you believe that um, there was someone named Noah, like the biblical story that, that occurred in the Bible, in some form or fashion? You know, remember, keep it general, because you, you get a lot of people from a lot of different perspectives, so try to keep it general enough so you can basically get a good pulse of what's going on. Um, how many of y'all believe or think, rather, believe or think that Noah or some character like Noah was preserved while a lot of other people were destroyed, while ancient civilization was destroyed? How many of y'all think that, um, that all the animals in the world, or at least the, the animals that we have today, the land-based, let's, let, let's, let's note this too, the land-based animals that we have today were preserved in um, an ark of some size. Do you think that they could have been an ark? And you'd be surprised, even among a lot of so-called church-going and religious folks, they may say, I believe in the Bible, I believe in Jesus, so forth and so on. But if you ask them seriously, they, they are somewhat conflicted because they've been hearing a lot of stuff that's been debunking this reality, and they have never studied and searched it out for themselves. But do your own um, research on this. It's just some, a very interesting point that, that above any other story in the Bible, the, those who are compromised, by hyperdimensional demonic entities, basically by this world, this mundane system. Basically, they, they don't like the idea of, of, of Noah, the flood, and you have to ask yourself why. It's like Stockholm. I call it a spiritual Stockholm syndrome. What do I mean by that? Stockholm syndrome basically is when someone has been kidnapped or taken hostage by somebody, and though at first they want to be free, they don't like the fact that they've been deprived of their freedom and their movement, so forth and so on. After a while, they get to understand they're hostage takers, and they actually become devil's advocates. If the person who took them was like a devil to them, then after a while of being with this devil, they begin to advocate for the devil and defend the devil instead of being like you or me would think they would be like, hey, um, 
that that person was wrong. I mean, we find the same kind of Stockholm. There's a slavery Stockholm syndrome as well among black folks. I mean, just look around and look at the media. We see this very same sort of um, slavery Stockholm syndrome. It's like when you identify with your oppressor. You understand when you and psychology actually breaks this down in a beautiful fashion. I mean, I'm talking about the scientific study of of real things, you know, real real psychological states that when somebody has been victimized in such a way, after a while, many of them begin to side with their 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 victim their victimizers. The victims begin to side with the victimizers. They become, in other words, devil advocates. Now, modern psychology calls this condition or conditioning, programming, trauma-based programming, they call it Stockholm Syndrome. And they say that in order to bring a person uh, so-called back to normal, as it was, quote, end quote, they need to kind of like work with them and, and bring them out of it. And many psychiatrists and psychologists, they say it's not easy. It all depends on the depth, you understand, of this relationship because they begin to identify with the devil. And this is the very same thing behind the, the visceral or, and the hateful and the negative and the dismissive reaction to the flood, to, to Noah and the Noah flood story. But what's really behind is not so much like they don't believe that water could cover the whole earth or they don't believe that only a few, such as Noah and his family, could be spared this deluge or that they really don't believe that you can scientifically take the clean animals in a certain order and they would be able to reproduce all over the earth. That's been proven scientifically. Even um, Walter Viet, um, a, a, actually somebody who said he was an atheist or he didn't believe in God, a scientist, and you might see some videos out there, Walter Viet, V-E-I-T-H, -E some very good videos. One he, he did on the whole Noah, Noah's Ark, the flood, and, and how, how scientifically it is possible to take the 2x2, the 7x7 two two, seven seven of the respective animals, and from that, that they basically come down today. I mean, he broke it down in such a beautiful scientific way, and the beauty about it is that he's somebody that said that he didn't believe in this at first. It, it, it boggled his scientific mind. He said it must have been a fairy tale. It must have been a fantasy. But what Walter Viet did, and we, and we present him as evidence, what he did, both his personal story of not believing in this, as a scientist, hearing the story that Noah's Ark, two by two, seven by seven, all the animals, and all that, that couldn't happen because there's so many different varieties of animals and so forth and so on. That means he had to take one of every variety. But then he found something interesting out scientifically that there is minor changes that can occur, and it's almost like a family, like if you have the same mother and father and your brothers and sisters, you're not exactly like your brother, so even though you came from the same mother and father, no infidelity or whatever being imagined or happening, you can have differences and so forth and so on. So even from like one so-called seed and, and ovum, male and female, you can have this diversity. And what modern certain scientists have gone wrong with the story of, of Noah is they looked at the diversities. Like for example, look at a zebra. A zebra basically is a horse. Okay, it has stripes and so forth and so on, but it's basically a horse. And then you have the mule, and if you know how the mule comes about, and there's a donkey, so forth and so on. But they're all related. They call them, what is it, um, esquines or equines, equines, like esquire, basically they call them, you know, of this particular, like canines belong to this particular group. But there is minor, um, how can you say, I won't call it evolution, but there's minor differences in a group. And, and he explained it. I've got to watch this video again myself. So I'm telling you all about it. So, you know, um, check it out. Um, the Walter Viet video. It should be out there. Perhaps it's on the YouTubes. And it's out there on the Google, the old Google that now become YouTube. It used to be out there. But I think it's still out there. You could check it out. It's, it's, it's a wonderful video. I'll get the name for you and bring it to you. But. Getting back to our basic point right here, consider this. There are certain people, why do some people 
hate, not just disagree, not just don't believe or don't think it happens, but there are some who have a, a, a deep set hatred to the very idea of the flood. And even right now when we say today that what we're getting is signs of Noah even today, they say, you know, of the, of the flood and so forth and so on, they say, no, it didn't happen. Here's where we've been going wrong, those of us who are on the Tzadik on side. We are just engaging them in their dislike instead of looking, well, what is behind that? You know what I mean? If somebody says, I don't like, I don't like um, this or that or these kind of people or that kind of people, well, what's behind it? It's like Francis, Dr. Francis Crest Welsing. Um, she also pointed out the reason why um, a, lot, a lot that has to do with white um, supremacy or racism, which is really the only kind of racism in the real world, but people have been deceived about that too. But white supremacy, racism, there is also a genetic, there's a fear of genetic annihilation that's behind white supremacy or behind racism. This is why when we say that black people, you understand, are not racist. Other peoples are not really racist compared to white people or better, not the average white folks who don't know who are lost too, but white supremacy, this institution, you understand, and this institution of this thought is throughout every layer of our modern world every layer of our modern world. And behind it, there's a fear, there's a phobia of genetic annihilation, of genetic annihilation. And, and the only race, also behind this global controlling of population and everything else, is really the, the European, the Anglo-European or white supremacy's fear of genetic annihilation, of loss of power on one level, and genetic annihilation. It's like look at the rich folks today. Look at look at the rich, the rulers of the world. And they they say that they have like they control like so much of the percentage of the wealth and everything. And they still are just counting how much more rich and rich and rich and rich and rich and rich, and rich that they're getting. And you would think that at a certain point they would truly share, truly give back, truly make it more equal. And you and you say, well, why would the rich who are already rich for for ten lifetimes? Why would they just want to get more riches and don't care about those people who they hurt or they affect? Because there is a demonic inter, inter, interpositioning, this, this demonic activity involved. Or you may want to call it, there is some psychologically, they're, they're crazy. They're crazy folks. I mean, think about the rich for a moment. Not all rich people. We want to say this, not all rich people, because people can be rich different ways, but those who are just rich in dollars and cents terms, those who are only rich in ching-ching terms, you know, those who are only rich in, 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 in paper, so-called paper terms. James talks about it right here, James chapter 5. The rich are one. Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. This might be one of the reasons why they confiscated the, the, the generators, you know, because they're afraid of fire. Like in the, they've been having a lot of these little vampire kind of uh, Halloween movies and in one of them about some... Um, one of these movies they had about the, 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 the people, the, the dead people or the, the demonic people, they were afraid of fire. Like you have a candle, they back up, you know, or sunlight, you know, which is a type of fire too. Perhaps it was talking about the solar flares. Think about it. It says, ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Notice that there too. It's saying that the rich... These rich who are being condemned by the divine word have heaped treasure together for the last day. So think about the 99%, the Wall Street protests. And, you know, pray for those, for those people down there as well. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields. Behold, the hire of the laborers 
First, it was the lost sheep, black folks, the enslaved um, Hebrews or Israelites, known as niggers and slaves, who were those laborers who reaped down the fields. Now it's the immigrants, you understand, the immigrants, the Mexicans, who, who are the laborers who have reaped down masses' fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. Notice what it's saying here. It's saying that the laborers have done their work, but they haven't gotten paid. That's what the Bible is saying. They've done their work, but they haven't gotten paid because of what? The Bible calls it like it is. And what is the big subject matter in this time? Fraud. Fraud. You understand? Which is kept, which is of you kept back by fraud. It crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, or Adonai Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth. Now, this should be very clear, the whole luxury. It began with, well, it didn't begin, but it got exasperated with Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. How many of you remember that show, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous? That's how they, that's like crack. You know, that was, that was the intellectual, spiritual, psychological crack. You know, they put that out there, people got on to that. And then they came with other stuff behind that. And now we see this, this highly materialistic, um, um, end time society that we're in now. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts. You know, their own feeling. What makes me feel good? You've nourished your hearts as in a what? Day of slaughter. As in a day of slaughter. I'm, I can't stop thinking about the Judas, what's what they call the Judas goat. You know the Judas goat? We saw this movie the other day. I think it was called Compulsion old black and white movie about like uh, about the, the, the Leopold and the Loeb case that occurred back in the 1920s and everything. An interesting movie, but in the portion of this movie, we'll give this clip, we'll show it to you, and we'll post it up on our site. They are in um, these two, two, two white males, right? They are in like some farm thing, and there's a black goat that is, that is walking ahead of the sheep. And one of the guys says, look at this, this is that old Judas goat, and how the Judas goat is used to lead the sheep, right, to lead the sheep to the slaughter, to lead them. And what happens when they get to the slaughterhouse door, the Judas goat, the Judas goat of the black goat basically steps aside, and all the sheep just bad, bad, bad. This is what we're witnessing among men and people. And remember, the Bible is showing us that this, these riches, notice the riches, the fraud that's going on is leading now in the delusion, you know, people um, nourishing their hearts. You know, now with the people told to um, um, do what thou wilt, if it make you feel good, then just do it. If you feel good about it, then that's all that matters. As long as you're not, quote, directly, violently, overtly hurting anybody, you can do it. All right? It says, a day of slaughter. It says, ye have condemned and killed the what? The just. And he doth not resist you. Now, this is a word for us, especially during a time such as this, this particular season that somewhat has gotten derailed. In other words, their usual witches' Sabbath season, even though some are still doing their rituals, their rites and rituals, it's not as, as, as powerful. They've lost some power. Therefore, we as the righteous must also recognize what we must do in this particular time. And the next portion of scriptures connect with it. Now, even though we're in James, we're in the book of James right now, James chapter 5. This all connects with our present, this week's Torah portion, Noah, or Noah. Because Noah chapter, chapter 6, let's go to chapter 6, and we'll continue with chapter 5 of James, or Jacob, because James stands for Jacob. And, and, and Jacob has a very interesting signif uh, signification. It says right here, it says in Genesis chapter five, Genesis chapter six, verse five. It says, "And Elohim saw the wickedness of man; that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, only evil continually." So let's ask ourselves: This particular season, so-called Halloween, is it not a season of of wickedness? of great wickedness in its basic root and intent. I know the children want to go trick or treat. That's because you allow them. Y'all as the parents allow them to get programmed like this. 
You see what I'm saying? You'll allow this to happen. You so say, what can we do? They're in school. Well, you, you see, it, it's, it, it's all part of a, uh, almost like a dominoes, a dominoes effect. They remove the Bible. You understand? They remove God from the classroom. They remove the Bible. You understand? And then they say, not do, thy will be done. You understand? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Now is do whatever you will. It's your kingdom. You hear about folks talking about, I'm, I'm making an empire. You know, like, you know, people, they're like kings and queens, and it's crazy. It's really, really, really crazy. But it's part of the imagination of the thoughts of their hearts that was only evil continually. Only evil continually. So here we get the, the, one of the links of what was going on pre-flood, pre-flood, right? Now we look at James. Go back to James chapter 5, verse 7. It says, be patient, therefore. Be patient, therefore, brethren. Brethren. In the words, brethren and sisterin and mothers, be patient. Now, other folks who are not brothers and sisters, though you may hear this word, it can't affect them because we know as brothers and sisters that we're seeking to do the will of our Father and the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Adonenu Yehoshua HaMoshiach. So it says, be patient, therefore, brethren, to the coming of Adonai. Behold, look and see. The husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth, and have long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. Now, in order to understand and really comprehend this, and see, this is, this is how we've got cut off from our true, our true natural roots, because most of us, if we're in the cities and grew up in the city life or projects, we might not understand, well, what is this all about a husband, man, and precious fruit of the earth, and and, and long patience and receiving early and latter rain. These are all agricultural terms. So many of us have already grew up like in concrete jungles, you know, you know, concrete slave ships sailing in the sea of captivity. So many of us don't know this by nature because we didn't grow up on a farm or something. Some of you all did, but the majority of us did not. So in order to comprehend this word, we have to first of all study, well, what is farming life all about? And one of the best books that that um, we find out there, especially for us at this present stage of, of our Ethiopian Hebrew, Many Mansions in Our Father's House, Elect Rastafari, this book right here, uh, Judaism and Vegetarianism by um, Richard, uh, Richard Schwartz, Richard Black. Oh, that's what Schwartz uh, Schwartz uh, is a way of saying black, or some say it's nigger. Well, anyway, Schwartz, I guess we're Schwartzes too. But that book is a very good book, Judaism and Vegetarianism. This is what says Rastafari. I think this is what we need to go to the next step of it. Could we talk about Shashimani? Some are talking about we've already lost Shashimani and, and it's over, and some are saying, no, we can still do it. What we're lacking, really, is the proper context of this. You see what I'm saying? What we're lacking is that discipleship to learn these things. Because otherwise, one goes into, say, a place like Africa and even the promised land, and you have nothing but land around you. And you're used to the nightclubs, the parties. You're used to the big city and corner store. And then you end up in the land. You know, you see land and animals and, and, and dirt is getting in your shoes and stuff like that. And you're like, I'm, I'm not liking this because you've been conditioned, you know what I'm saying, to Babylon. So this is why when the Lord brought, brought the Israelites across the desert, that was also a part of their reconditioning. They, you know, just like somebody in Stockholm Syndrome, you know, they, they have to be like reconditioned, reprogrammed, like the, the um, 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 what they call that again, when, when, when people come out of um, some kind of a situation, they say that before they can talk to the public, they first have to, like, deprogram them or something like that. I think they also call it deprogramming. There's a lot of different terms for it, but basically it's the same thing. They have to be taken out of that form of program. Now, let's ask ourselves as so-called descendants of uh, PTSD, post-traumatic slave disorder victims, when have we as a people, the closest that we as a people got to it was through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the early nation of Islam. That's probably the closest that we as black people got to any um, 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 successful level of deprogramming and getting back to a, 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 a God, a God-given 
state. A God, because Elijah Muhammad, he took brothers who were who are pimps and 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 whoremongers and and drug sellers and and gunslingers, and and he cleaned them up. You understand? He cleaned his teaching, his, his methodology worked. You understand? Same thing for the sisters. It worked. Now even a lot of these psychiatrists and psychologists and the rest of them, even with all their big pharma drugs, still can't do it. Still can't do it. You know what I mean? Still can't really bring a person back to that 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 God image. You understand? Out of that programming, and in some cases the programming is generational, and we have to consider that. But it says to us right here, be ye also patient, establish your hearts. It's important for us to establish our hearts, and the heart is signi signifies the consciousness, to establish our consciousness, you know, and um, so much has gone on, you know, um, but just because a lot has gone on doesn't mean that in a very short period of time we can't reverse the curse. See, a lot of folks believe that, oh, it's going to take us thousands of years to do this. That's a part of the devil's thinking. That's a part of the devil's mentality because, you know, if I've had you as, as a victim, in a sense, and you want to get free, and I'll say, yeah, I'm sorry about what I did, but it's going to take a long, long time. Because when I, I, you see, the system still want to benefit. The old-time slave master has upped his game, has changed his game. Now they're on all these TV shows, and they're trying to be your friend and work out your personal difference. And how come you, black man, deadbeat, and you, black woman, is the way you are? Y'all are... I hate y'all. You know, this is the kind of TV shows that's going on. But if someone says, well, part of this is a generational programming, you understand? It's like, it's, it's, it's like people left to themselves after a very, very bad and demonic experience, slavery. Oh, we can't talk about that. That's past. That's a long time ago. But still, they're talking about um, 1776, and they're still are talking about the um, um, Civil War, when that time and Memorial Day, you know, they're still talking about Abraham Lincoln, you know, they're still talking about the Founding Fathers. If we can talk about the Founding Fathers, or if they can talk about the Founding Fathers of America, then the issue of slavery and dealing with it in a progressive way, because some people are... As even ourselves, we don't want to hear about the oh, okay, they did us, they did this, uh, they did this, uh, but what can we do to reverse the curse? You know what I'm saying? Yes, we have to acknowledge this is what happened, but not just to dwell on that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's also a part of, of reinforcing the same trauma based mind control. What can we do to reverse that process? But anyway, it says, Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, which is the consciousness, for the coming of Adonai draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of Adonai, who spoke, all of them spoke in the name of Adonai, or Adoni, for an example of suffering affliction, of suffering affliction, and of patience. And this is another key thing, too, because we look at our particular sabbatical portion right now, which is Noah or Noah. We will also begin to understand that even Noah in his time as a preacher or teacher of righteousness, can you imagine? I think it was a couple of hundred years, excuse me, that Noah actually was preaching and proclaiming there's a flood. There's a flood coming. It's like many of us that says we need to come out of Babylon, come out of Babylon, come out of Babylon, you know. And a lot of folks say, well, where is it? Babylon is falling. Rastafari is saying Babylon is falling, Babylon is falling. We're like, oh, it's not falling. You better get with the program. Okay. Okay. You understand? Is that your final decision? But take, we are to take the prophets, the Nabiyat, which is the second portion of our our sabbatical readings first is Torah, the Torah parasha, or the, the Orit, and then is the Haftarah, which is the Navim or Nabiyat, the prophets, and the third part is the Burt Hadasha or the Hadith Kidan, the New Testament. These are the readings for us as we remember the Sabbath and keep it set apart. You know what I'm saying? And keep it set apart. And there's also a, a mystical, spiritual, um, um, benefit to, to it. Because remember we talked about that Halloween is the devil's Sabbath. It is the devil's Sabbath. But see, we, we, we overcome them, him and them, 
by keeping the way, the truth, and the life. And if we are spiritually perceptive, we can see manifestations actually in the mundane or in the world or in the earth, you see. And we'll hopefully be able to touch on that, but some of you will probably already understand that. You, you know what I mean? Because we're supposed to be able to cast, cast out demons. So that we're supposed to have our own spiritual, or some will say magical, but our own spiritual power. This is one of the things that Christ said that all those who truly are, you understand, his, have the power or ability to cast out devils. This is, this is where we've been failing, brothers and sisters. You understand? Instead, a lot of you all been making compromises. Oh, it's not so bad. It's just for the children, the candy, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like those horror movies where somebody suspected this, this, this individual was, was, was a horror character and then went along with them, and then that individual did a double cross, like the old snake on top of the tortoise crossing the river. And they said, how could you do this to me? How could you do this to me? You understand? Know and he's like, I can't go against my nature. You know what I mean? And, and it, it's, it's just, this is the same thing that's happening, but on a, a grander scale. A grander scale, because remember, ones and ones still have that free will. You still have that free will. You, you, have, you have to really consider that. Either, either it's, it's, it's our Father's will be done, you understand, on earth as in heaven, or you're going to do what you will, which is another roundabout way of doing Satan's will. You know this? But we are to take the prophets who spoke in the name of Adonai, who spoke in the authority of the Master for an example of suffering affliction, suffering affliction and of patience. This is very, very difficult, you see. And why a lot of folks, a lot of our people fall for it and, and end up to be Satan's and Satan's accomplices is because they're not able to suffer affliction for a righteous thing, you know what I'm saying, for a righteous cause. And they have no patience because their hearts are unstable. Their hearts are they're, they're double-minded. And look at our teaching on double-mindedness and the whole M.O. Um, on double-mindedness because we all are susceptible to it. But at once we learn about this and become familiar with it, if our wills really are to do the Father's will, our Father's will, the, the, the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, then with that knowledge we'll be able to overcome because he says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Behold, we count them happy which endure. We, call, we count them blessed. Those are blessed who endure. You understand who endure? I mean, it's like anything even down here mundane. If one is not able to endure but give up so easily, people usually say, you ain't worth beep. You know what I mean? So why would you think that heaven would look at it any different? You understand? Because it is heaven that they're afraid of. They're afraid of some extraterrestrial. They're afraid of our brothers from other planets. I'm talking about the higher ones, not the lower ones, the grades that, that, these, that these evil people are dealing with, who are the fallen angels. You see, there's, there's fallen angels and there's a higher, there's a higher angels who have not fallen. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Eob or Job, and have seen the end or the fulfillment, the fulfillment of Adonai. That Adonai is very pitiful. In other words, he, he has mercy. He's not willing that any, that any, he even has mercy, you know, even on those who have been deluded and deceived by the devil and are championing evil, the evil doers thing because they're, part, they're, they're caught up in that deception. But even for them, the Almighty, you know, saying, is not willing that they, be, that they perish. But if it's their will to do Satan's will, then so be it. And he's of tender mercy, because mercy triumphs over judgment. The judgment is already written. People say, well, how come this hasn't happened? Because the Almighty is showing his mercy. He's giving all of us an opportunity. Is that your final answer? Is that your final decision? But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. Now, there's a very important teaching of that, swearing not. Because, see, a lot of the... A lot of the accomplices of Satan, they try, they try to get you to give your word to something that's not good. They try to get you on the racket, you understand, especially to say it. 
because Christ told us about, you know, about swearing. And here James is also telling us about swearing. But let your yea be yea. You know, and people say, I, I, I swear on my this and that and such and such and such. Usually they're lying. Usually they're, usually they're up to something. Usually that means they're, they're yes and no. They don't even believe they're yes and no. You understand? Because prior, perhaps double-mindedness. But let your yea be yea and your nay nay. Least ye fall into what? Condemnation. Least you fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. So in a time like this, you know, these, these, these witches' Sabbaths, such as Halloween and these other times where the evildoers or the deluded and deceived folks are going along with the, with the conditioned responses, this is a time for us. This does afflict a lot of us. A lot of us are afflicted by it. Because everywhere we turn, people are, you know, you be in your house, and, and if you can hear outside, people are making all sort of, like, howling after the, the demonic activity, and you're like, oh, my goodness, this is those of us who live in the city, so forth, and so on, a lot of crazy stuff. It's like, literally, be, like, hell has come from, from where it's at, where it was at, and it's on the earth. And it says that every civilization, society that forget God becomes C.O., becomes Sheol. It's like the duat has opened up and, this, and all this demonic activity is right down here on earth. I mean, look at the news. Look at the kind of stuff. One time people would say, I would never see, a, I never thought I would hear of a black person doing this or that. We, one time we used to be able to say, oh, black people don't do that. <laughs> you can't really say that no more. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Let him pray. Is any merry? Is any happy? Let him sing psalms, psalms, the same psalms, you know, like psalms of David, not these little funky, these little funky fake Christian songs that people want to, you know, um, anyway. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let him pray, oh, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of Adonai. Unfortunately, a lot of churches don't even do this anymore. That's a whole other subject matter. But this is still the proper way. This is what we seek. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Look at that. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. So we have an obvious example that these churches are not really dealing with the true faith of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why they lack that particular power. You can't turn to your church and say, oh, I'm sick. Uh, can you call for the pastor and preacher? The pastor and preacher can call for a doctor. And not even Dr. Yesus, Dr. Seuss. No. Anyway, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and Adonai shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. This is a shame that the church in the so-called churches and Christianity today, they can't even trust each other to say, yo, bro, yo, sis, um, I've been going through something. And found, you know, if you tell that person, it's going to be, they're going to put on their blog site, on their Facebook or something like that. But the, but the word says, you understand, that we are to confess our faults. And it say sins but faults one to another and pray for another, one for another, that ye may be healed. Look at that right there. In order to be healed, we are, we are counseled and advised to pray for one another. Now, somebody said, what does that have to do with Noah's flood and Halloween? <laughs> it has everything to do with it, my brothers and sisters. You understand? Because this is a sickness. This is a pre-programmed sickness. You understand? It's an activity, but it's a sickness. And you see, after Halloween, just watch the news and see what happens afterward. All these evil activities, they're all, it's all tied together. But it says here that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Just to conclude this chapter here, it says, Elias, or Elijah, Eliyahu, was a man subject to like passions as we are. Now, it's talking about Elijah. Remember when, when our black Lord and Savior, Adonai, Yeshua, was on the Mount, Mount Tabor? He, he conversed with garments change as, 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 as white as the sun, you know, as bright as the sun, should we say, that he was speaking to, to Mashu, Musa, Moses, and to Eliyahu, Elijah. Now, here is speaking about El, uh, Elias or Elias, Elijah. He was a man subject to like passions as we are. In other words, we all got human, we can say shortcomings or passions, 
You understand? And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. He prayed earnestly that there would not be any rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. It rained not on the earth or maybe more locally in that region or land for the space of three years and six months. It sounds like what's going on out there in um, the Horn of Africa, Somalia. They said that they, they haven't had regular rains for, for a couple of years now. That's why that drought and the famine is, is so bad. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, if any do err from the truth, and one convert him, and one kind of brings him back, make him know, or let him know. Make him know. Not make him believe. Make him know. Have gnosis, gnosis, scientia, or scientia. That's science. Science is knowledge, and knowledge is science. Don't be, don't be deceived. Science is gnosis. Gnosis is science. Look it up. Make him know that he which converteth the sinner or the brother or sister that fell short from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. Shall save a soul, not just a body, but a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Now, here it has a link with Proverbs 10 and 12, and we're going to conclude this portion, if we can, within the time that we have, because the clock is running, um, 10 and 20. Let's go 10 and 20 of Proverbs. 10 and 20. 10 and 20 says, says uh, 10 and 20, it says, um, it, says, it says, the tongue of the just is as silver, choice silver, and the heart of the wicked is little worth. The heart of the wicked, the heart, the sentiment of the wicked is of little worth. I was looking for the verse um, that it says that love covers a multitude. Is a verse some of y'all probably are, are, are shouting it out. Um, actually, 10 and 12, 10 and 12, 10 and 12, the right chapter, wrong verse. You, it, uh, it says in Proverbs 10 and 12, it says, Hatred stirreth up strife. Hatred, but love, thicker, covereth all sins. But love, and it's speaking in the godly context. But the love of God covereth, covereth. Does it say covereth? It says covereth, like covereth in the sense of kippur, kippur, kapar, kafar, kapar, as in Yom Kippur. It covers a multitude. It says a multitude of sins. And this may shock some folks, but, you know, we're not afraid of, we should not be afraid of the evildoers or devil or Satan if we are mature in the word. In fact, in fact, um, we should love him. Now, I know, I know people are like, wait. See, but first I must, I, must, I must preface this. Understand what the love of God in Christ is. You see, when we say love the devil or love Satan. You understand? I'm talking about your brother or your sister. I'm talking about the others out there because a lot of y'all, even for righteousness sake, are carrying too much hatred as though you're God. You understand? Almighty says, I hate this. I hate that. I hate the evildoers. I hate what they're doing. He tells us don't do it. He didn't say, well, you are to focus your, your spiritual activity on hatred. You see, because a lot of folks have fallen to the evildoers because when they get in that hate zone, the evildoers' hatred is more so than them. And, you know, like attracts like, you understand. But as the Almighty, you understand, is, 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 is above that, we have to stay above the fray because this word tells us right here that hatred stirreth up strife. You understand? Just because we talk about their evil deeds and what they, and what they do, we, we don't like it. You understand? But we don't have to get so caught up in the hatred. You see, so caught up in the hatred. Because the hatred will affect your, you see, love and hate, as that reggae song, Dennis Brown, love and hate can never be friends. Oh, no. So we have to go back to the foundation, back to the word, back to the root. And my brothers and sisters, with, with that being said, 
we're going to conclude um, this particular reasoning and hope to catch up with you on another one very soon. So pray for I and I as I and I pray for, for the I in the name of our God and Father, Kadamawi Hala Selassie in his Christ, Adonenu, Yehoshua HaMoshia, otherwise known as Jesus Christos. So, Shalom Ras Tafari. <laughs>